Hello and welcome back to Hilltop Stovetop, the show where we teach you how to make great meals in an ordinary kitchen. Today we're going to start with a little bit of what's potentially uh, Christmas baking. Uh, I know it's a little early for that but it's okay. Uh, the other thing about this particular uh, thing that we're going to make today is it's really easy and it's a fun thing to get your kids involved with. Um, matter of fact, it's one of the very first things that I remember helping uh, my amma make uh, and when, uh, when I was just a tiny little kid, even a preschooler. Um, and it's known by the imaginative name of brown cookies. It's a, um, a ginger type cookie and very easy to make, stores well, uh, freezes well if it ever makes it to the freezer. Uh, but it's the kind of thing that you can do well ahead on your Christmas baking and save the gooey things until a little bit closer to the day when you want to be serving them. It's also a kind of cookie that's really great with, uh, with tea or with, um, with milk or whatever. Uh, and well, it's a, a kind of cookie that's easy for kids to make because you roll it up in little balls and squish it and it's, it's fun. Um, you can also add a little bit of extra flour to it and then roll it out to make your gingerbread men. So it's pretty versatile from that perspective. So we're going to start off with our ingredients and I will list the recipe in the description below. Um, so you'll be able to, to follow along. Um, it's basically butter, sugar, eggs, very typical things for cookies. Uh, of course, flour, it's got baking soda instead of baking powder. And the spices in here, we're going to start off, we've got some molasses, which is going to give it uh, the, the brown color, but also add to the flavor. Uh, we've got cinnamon for that Christmassy kind of flavor. We've got ground ginger. Uh, you know, other things that when I'm, that when I'm making uh, like soups and stews and things like that, I like to use the, the crushed ginger or the fresh grated ginger. In the case of baking, you use the ground ginger, like the powdered stuff, and allspice. And contrary to what some people might think, allspice is not just a mixture of all spices. It's actually a spice unto itself. Um, it's grown in Jamaica. And when they, um, when Columbus came to Jamaica, they thought that it was actually pepper because it, the, the berries for allspice look very much like a peppercorn. Um, but when you grind it up, that gives you that nice cinnamony kind of, um, flavor. And it's also, um, a kind of spice that's used in a lot of things, everything from, um, different kinds of liquors to, um, men's perfumes. Uh, so if you think allspice aftershave, that's the kind of scent that you're going to get from this. Uh, so those three kinds of spices together make these great cookies. So uh, we're going to move our camera over so we can get a little closer look at our mixer. When I was learning how to make this, of course, it was we didn't have a, an electric mixer. Uh, we did it all by hand. And that was another thing that as a kid, it was my job to, uh, to cream the butter which is where you, you mix it in with your sugar and make sure it's very, very smooth and you're adding some, ad, adding some extra air to it. Now I've got a machine that does that and it's much more efficient. Okay, so we have all of our ingredients here ready to go. And we're gonna start off with the butter. Uh, this particular recipe calls for three quarters of a cup of butter. And um, if you're gonna use margarine, that's fine. Just make sure that it's the solid margarine, not uh, the soft spread things, because that has a different melting point and you'll end up with a completely different product. And then we're gonna to add to that a cup of white sugar. And um, then we're gonna start by creaming those things together. So uh, what this will do is it will make sure that your, um, your sugar and your um, butter are really well incorporated and we'll also add a little bit of lightness to that butter. So this is going to get a little bit noisy while we do this, but be, bear with me. Okay, so there we've got our butter and our sugar well mixed together. 
And then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add in the just a single egg and mix it some more. There you go. So you notice I make sure that I keep my hands well out of the way when I'm doing this too. I don't want to get anything stuck. And I also don't want to get the, the spatula stuck in there. I mean, you certainly don't want your fingers, but even catching something like this into that spinner will, uh, will cause a big mess. All right, so when you're making cookies, your, your fat, your sugar, and your eggs, that's about the only liquid we're gonna put in that. Next part we're gonna do is to get our um, dry ingredients ready. So I'll just move this off to the side. And you see here I've got a, a bowl with a, uh, with a sieve in it. And uh, what that's gonna do is it's gonna help us get all of the, the dry ingredients well mixed together. Okay, so we started off, we've got two cups of all-purpose flour. And again, for my um, subscribers that uh, live in places where it's, uh, they normally use self-rising flour, you're gonna have to adjust this recipe um, because um, with all-purpose flour, you have to add a leavening agent to it, which in our case is gonna be a teaspoon of baking soda. And there's something about the molasses in here, which is a little bit acidic, and that's why we're using soda instead of baking powder. So there's a teaspoon of baking soda. We're going to add in a teaspoon of ground ginger. And a um, half a teaspoon of cinnamon, along with our teaspoon of ginger. And then we want just a half a, oops, half a teaspoon of the allspice, which is over here. And we could just add these things directly into the bowl and mix it up that way. But by sifting it all together, that distributes the spices evenly. Um, so you're going to end up with a tastier, kind of more consistent product. And you see, I'm just bumping up against my hand to, to make it go through a little faster. And I see we end up with a little bit of lumps in there, but they will, with a little force, push them through and that's good. It used to be that, I mean, all the recipes would say to, to sift things as much as three times. Nowadays, most of the flours you get are all pre-sifted and this is just to make sure that there isn't any lumps in there that might be caused by a little bit of extra moisture. So now we're ready to start incorporating that in with our butter. Last thing that we need to do is to add our molasses. It calls for two tablespoons of molasses. Um, that's one thing that you can be, um, uh, you don't have to be absolutely precise with your measurements. Sometimes when you're trying to pour some molasses, depending on what your temperatures are. Sometimes it will grow, you know, pour very nicely and sometimes it just oozes all over the place. So um, it just the more molasses that's in there, the darker it's going to be and the stronger that flavor is going to be. So we're going to start mixing this and just gradually adding in those, um, those dry ingredients. See why I moved the camera away because the the dust from the dry ingredients would have mucked up our lens. And but once again, we're scraping things down from the sides. And even though this is a very efficient machine, if you don't keep scraping down the sides, you end up with a whole lot of flour on the outside. And even when we're finished all this uh, electric mixing, 
I'm still gonna do a little bit of manual mixing here. So that's about all we're gonna do with the machine. Now I'll just take that out and get all the batter off of the, the beater here, or the whisk, I guess it's technically is. Whisk is usually something that's made with a bunch of wires all together. All right, so we have our, our mixture all together here, but you can see how there's bits where there's still a little bit of butter off to the side and there's still a little bit of flour in the bottom. So just to be sure that I have a nice homogenous mixture, I'm gonna take this little mixer here, which is a, um, a Danish mixing spoon. I got this from Lee Valley Tools. If you don't have an electric mixer, this is awesome for cookie dough. Um, I know people that you know have small kitchens and they don't have room for big mixers to be used once a year. And they're quite happy with, with just one of these things. And you can see how with the wires in it, and it's a very strong wire that everything, it just pulls it all together very, very nicely. Okay, so now we're just gonna clean that off. And now comes the really fun part for you and your little kids or your big kids. So I've given my hands a good wash before I started. And you'll notice that I've got parchment paper on the cookie sheets. And I've also got my oven preset for 375 degrees. So we're gonna start. Um, I use my little ice cream scoop, the same one that I used for making meatballs. So I get a consistent size. But we just got a little bit like that in my hand and you just roll that up into a, a ball. And we're gonna spread that out on our cookie sheet and we'll get to fast forward through this. It's gonna be very exciting. Okay, so that, that bit of rolling them into balls is something that the kids can help with. And you notice that they are perfect balls, but they're similar size. And uh, what we're gonna do now is kind of squish them down because if we just let them put them in the oven like this, you'd end up with this big glob of dough and it probably wouldn't cook through in the middle. Because this is the kind of dough that isn't going to melt quite as much as some will. Okay, so now we've got these all into uh, nice little balls and this would be a great thing for the kids to have helped out with. Uh, the next part is we're gonna squish them down into more cookie shapes. And we wanna start off with some kind of a, uh, something that has a pattern to the bottom of it. Uh, my Emma had a, uh, a sugar bowl that was a cut glass sugar bowl that made a nice star pattern. Um, the, you're gonna end up with a pattern on these. It will be a little vague as it's um, as they cook, but it will still be pretty cool and they'll all be consistent. So first off, I need to, I'm just gonna put a little bit of, pat some dough around on here so it's a little sticky on the bottom. Then I dip it in the sugar, so we end up with sugar on the top there. And then just squish down, and of course it wants to stick to the bottom of the first, first couple in particular. But you see how you end up with a little bit of a pattern. And then dip it in the sugar, squish it down, and so on uh, through of our through our whole batch of cookies here. So we'll just fast forward through this part. Okay, perfect. So now we've got our first tray of cookies done. We're going to pop those in the oven for about. I'm going to start it off for about eight minutes. It's probably going to be end up closer to 10 minutes, but I'm going to go for eight minutes to start with. And then you'll notice that as I lift this up, I've got my second cookie sheet ready to go. So while these ones are baking, I'll be preparing the next batch of cookies so I can just swap them out one after the other. And it'll be pretty quick to make up this batch. Okay, so we're almost at our eight minute mark here. And I'm just going to, as soon as it beeps, I'm gonna open up the oven and double check here. There we go. 
And as we can see, they're still a little on the light color side. I'll just pull them out so you can see a little better. And uh, they're, they're brown, but not really dark brown. So I'm just gonna pop that back in and I will give it that extra two minutes, uh, which will make it at a 10 minute mark. But if I'd gone for 10 minutes and it turned out that was too much, we would have ended up with a whole batch of burnt cookies. So we'll just wait a minute. Okay, so there we are at 10 minutes. Oh, they smell wonderful and Christmassy. There we go, folks. And then take this one out, pop the next one in. And now we know for sure that the next one will need full 10 minutes. Okay, so now one of the things when you have cookies like this, you want to move them over to a cooling rack and that way they, they um, cool evenly and you don't end up with it kind of steamy and mushy on the bottom. But I want you to have a quick look at the bottom of one of these and it is going to be very hot. But you see how they're nicely browned evenly on both sides. And that's an advantage to using your parchment paper where you don't have anything that's sticking and it gives you a nice even finish to your cookies. I also want you to note the, the pattern. So it's not as intense as when we first squished down on that. Uh, but if you have, it um, doesn't have to be this kind of pattern. If you've got anything that has a little few bumps to it, you can add it in. Um, even just using a flat surface is fine or squishing it down with your fingers or with a fork. But this kind of gives you this nifty little thing that looks like a star and people go, how did you do that? It's amazing. Now we can keep reusing the same parchment paper. So if you're having a baking marathon kind of a day, um, the parchment paper will actually end up getting a little bit browned itself but it's quite all right to use the same one over and over again. Thank you for joining us once again at Hilltop Stovetop, where today we made brown cookies, uh, just the start of the Christmas baking, a lovely ginger uh, cookie with a nice, nice crisp to it and a delicious flavor and it's really warmed up the kitchen on a cold day as well. Um, I'm sure that there's gonna be a whole lot of people that are elbowing their way up for these things. So if you liked today's episode, please like and subscribe, and we look forward to seeing you on, the, uh, on our next episode. I'm gonna be doing a little bit more Christmas baking. I'll be making what we call our uh, jumbo raisin cookies, uh, which are a very easy one for the kids to help you out as well. And the other thing that I'm going to be making in upcoming episodes is we've got an old fashioned ham that uh, we'll be doing. So that's another holiday favorite is ham instead of turkey. And I'm going to show you how to cook it in a very um, old fashioned kind of way that's going to add a lot of extra flavor and potentially take out some of the salt that is in a typical commercial ham these days. So again, like and subscribe because hitting those like buttons and the subscribe buttons, that's uh, what supports me as a, um, um, a presenter on YouTube. And I want to keep being able to give you wonderful things like we have today. So thanks very much. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye now.